Siobhan McSweeney hit our screens in the sitcom Dairy Girls. Am I going to the Bahamas? Am I going to the seashells? No. Siobhan McSweeney, you're going to Northern Ireland. Now she's been on a bigger exploration of Northern Ireland. The people, the places and the politics. We caught up with her back down south in her native Cork. What surprised me most, I think, was for such a small geographical area, how diverse all the places were. So we started off in Belfast, incredibly confident, cosmopolitan, sort of political centre. After that, you move out to the Mourne Mountains with their sort of their majesty. And then you have, you know, the North Coast, it's all beaches, golden beaches. Couldn't believe that bits of Ireland looked like uh, California. Christ, but this is heavy. Sister, no, let me. What do you have in here, girls? It's not ours. Not yours? As Sister Michael in Derry Girls, she made us laugh and sometimes cry. With its 1990s references and barbs about the troubles, the series struck a chord with many in Britain and Ireland, but also unexpectedly became a worldwide hit. It's as truthful about the North as those sombre, male, mustachioed, leather, bomber-jacketed uh, dramas that we would associate with the North. Also, it's very funny. Can I have a smell of vodka down here, over? Vodka, did he say? Interesting. Yet, while filming her travel logs in Northern Ireland, there was a little confusion. There were a few lads who I came away and I was pretty sure they thought I was actually a nun. What um, gave the game away? What were you doing? Probably was... my, my potty mouth. In fact, so bright is her stardom, we couldn't do this interview without sunglasses. So we've had an alleged apparition here this morning. Well, it's in the weeping statue category. Sure I know. But like so many women in her industry, Siobhan McSweeney has found breaking through a challenge. And it's not only that I'm a woman, it's because I'm a large woman. It's because uh, I don't fit a certain aesthetic. There's a great sort of myth that, you know, we're all getting better and better and better and better. No, 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 we, uh, especially when it comes to uh, gender parity. I auditioned for a comedy and been told that I was the funniest person they auditioned, but they'd go with the pretty girl. They explicitly said that? Mm. Again, stupid, uh, but it's systemic. And also I'm gorgeous. You definitely are. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Not at the that. moment. I'm too hot. <laughs> Siobhan believes working in London gave her many more opportunities than she would have had in Ireland, and there's a lot she loves about Britain. I'm beginning with the very grand city hall, which but she's found herself frustrated at the ignorance about Northern Ireland. I was really confused and hurt. Like hurt was the word uh, at how people who I knew were intelligent, educated and really interested in the world had huge black spots when it came to Northern Ireland and Ireland in general and uh, as an extension, their own history. What sort of things were they saying? Not really understanding the difference between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. Not really understanding that the Republic was a sovereign nation, that it wasn't part of the United Kingdom. I still encounter that at least weekly. Where do you think that attitude comes from? Fundamentally, it's a, it's a lack of education. If you get the education out there, then that changes. But if that's not only about the North, it's about your colonial past. And I think a, there's a psychic absence in you because you don't know your history. You're not alone. In Ireland, we could do with knowing a bit less of our history, frankly, because we're sort of stuck in it. But because there's an absence, it gets filled in with, with superficial stuff, like flags, like simple Churchillian quotes. This place is class. Wait for me! She's hoping sharing her adventures around Northern Ireland will help break stereotypes and educate as well as amuse.